Hey guys, today's video is a little different because lately I have been seeing a lot of comments about last meals. Some of you are completely against it and some of you couldn't care less. Although we can't pinpoint when the last meal actually began, we do know that it became Christianized by the Europeans and now here in America, although it is not a requirement, it has become a tradition. I ended up doing some research and I found out that inmates that are found guilty and admit they are guilty request a much larger last meal than inmates who have expressed their innocence or have been exonerated years later. In this video, I am going to list a few people on both ends of the spectrum and list what they had for their last meals. At the end of the video, I have some questions for you guys and I would love for you guys to have discussions in the comments below. First, we have Joe Aride. He was posthumously granted a pardon in January of 2011. His DOD was in 1939, and his last meal was ice cream, and that's it. Next, we have Jesse Teferro, whose DOD was in 1990. He always expressed his innocence, but it wasn't until after he passed away that he was declared innocent and the real guilty criminal admitted to the crimes. For Jesse's last meal, he had steak, broccoli, and hot tea. And then we have Johnny Frank Garrett, who expressed his innocence, and after his DOD, DNA determined that he was innocent of the crime he was sentenced for. Just like Joe Aride, Johnny Garrett only had ice cream for his last meal. Last, we have Carlos de Luna. His DOD was in 1989 at the age of 27, and it wasn't until years later when new evidence surfaced that people believed in his innocence. The victim's brother also did an interview where he said in light of new evidence, he believed Carlos de Luna was innocent. Initially, he did refuse a last meal, and this is what a lot of reports say, but the chaplain who spent his final moments with Carlos said that for his last meal, he actually had strawberries and ice cream. First, we have Stanley Allison Baker. He actually had a personal journal of all of the 60 plus crimes he committed. For his last meal, he had four cans of vanilla Coke, a pint of mint chocolate chip ice cream, a loaded baked potato, 12 pieces of bacon, two 16 ounce ribeye steaks, a pound of sliced turkey meat, two hamburgers, a salad with blue cheese dressing, and two corn on the cobs. Next, we have Peter Mignol, who had one of the largest last meals recorded. His DOD was in 2004, and he always said that he was guilty, and even said that he was ready to pay the price. For his last meal, he had chocolate cake, vanilla cake, cookies and cream ice cream, caramel pecan fudge ice cream, 20 beef tacos, 20 beef enchiladas, two double cheeseburgers, a pizza with jalapenos, fried chicken, spaghetti, a small fruit cake, and two of the following, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, root beer, and orange juice. Next, we have Stephen Woods, who pled guilty for his crime. For his last meal, he had four pieces of fried chicken breast, a large pizza, two pounds of bacon, two bacon hamburgers, fries, two pints of ice cream, five chicken fried steaks, 12 garlic breadsticks with marinara on the side, and two of the following drinks, Mountain Dew, Pepsi, root beer, and sweet tea. Steven ate all of this just two hours before his final moments. Up last, we have Dennis Bagwell. He tried pleading not guilty, but all of the evidence pointed to him. His DOD was in 2005, and for his last meal, he had onion rings, bacon, a dozen eggs with onions, fried tater tots, sliced tomatoes, a salad with ranch, two hamburgers, peach pie, milk, steak, fried chicken, barbecue ribs, coffee, and iced tea. These are just a few people, and I know there are many more out there. This is not to say that every man who's innocent has requested something small, or that every guilty person has requested something large. These statistics are on average. And now for discussion and question time. Question one, 
What are your thoughts on why innocent people have smaller final meals and guilty people have larger final meals? I personally think that the last meal is a way to show a final nice gesture or showing compassion, which is something the criminal was not capable of showing. Or maybe like a parting gift, like we are about to do the same thing to you as you did to someone else. So take this final meal. I think that maybe the innocent people are thinking, forget this gift. And I think the guilty people are narcissistic, selfish, and greedy, and just take advantage of the generous offer. Question two, do you feel that there should be a last meal? If you agree, do you think that there should be a monetary limit? And if you disagree, why? Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video, and I look forward to reading what you guys have to say in the comments below about this topic. Now, after this, I'm going to tally up the votes on the You Choose segment and start working on that video for you guys.